quiet, isn't it? Yes. You! You're Clive Rossfield! It's me! Hannah! Rodney Murdoch's wife! Oh no, Lady Hannah! Oh, I knew it was you! You haven't changed at all! The Lord Marquis and Jill too! It's so good to see you both again! <gasps> it's good to see you too, Lady Hannah. If you have time, you simply must come back to the house. I haven't much to offer, but what is mine is yours. We should be delighted. Hmm. So sad. Nobody told her that when the reason died. The world ever since. I can well understand fleeing from those iron blood brutes, but oh, to take to the road at such a tender age. It's wonderful to see you safe and well, Lady Hannah. Do you think you will stay here in Eastpool? Rosaleth still enjoys the Mother Crystal's blessing. Does it not? You could always move. This house holds a lot of memories for me. Oh. So long as I can live here in peace, here I shall stay. Not that it matters. The capital is closed to civilians, by order of the Duchess. Or should I say, Her Imperial Majesty. Annabella's marriage to the Emperor of Sambrec heralded a great many changes here. Yes. Of course. Oh, forgive me. I... I didn't mean to... Oh. Please. There is nothing to forgive. Would my mother not make an exception for you and your husband? Surely she would not refuse the Lord Commander. Ah. Oh. You haven't heard, then. Rodney passed away on the night of the fire. He never returned from Phoenix Gate. I... I'm sorry. Clive. My poor child. You look pale. All this traveling must have taken its toll. I insist you rest. We can talk later. Hmm? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Are you sure you don't want to sleep inside? I can't. Not after what I did. Lady Hannah said she would prepare a change of clothes for you in the morning. She really has been very kind. Look at that muscle. <sighs> Thirteen years of killing. 
13 years without the faintest glimmer of hope. It was only Joshua that kept me going. I swore that I would avenge his death. That I would kill his killer. That was the only thing that gave my life any meaning. But if it was me who killed Joshua and Murdoch and all the others, then why the hell am I still breathing? I ask myself the same. <laughs> when I fought, hundreds died. There were so many bodies, so many lives cut short in their prime. That day in Dalmechia, I... I wanted to join them. I wanted it all to end. I couldn't bear it anymore. If living meant being that, better to be just another body. I'm sorry. Do you remember that night on the balcony? When we looked up at the moon. I said a prayer to Metia and that prayer was answered. You came back to me. The heavens must have a plan for us. We should get some rest. Right. Good night, Clive. Sleep well. Thank you, Lady Anna. Perhaps now people will not flee at the sight of me. You look just like Elwyn did when he was your age. How did you come to have some of my father's old clothes? Oh, before Elwyn became Archduke, our families would often summer together. He and Rodney were like brothers. These clothes have been in a wardrobe for years, collecting cobwebs along with everything else. very grateful for them and sorry for depriving you of your memories not at all it's what your father would have wanted they suit you well <laughs> thank you lady hannah yes thank you You've been most kind. No, I should thank you. It may only have been for a short while. But seeing you again took me back to happier times. Fare you well, my lord and lady. And you, Lady Hannah. If we follow the road to the north, it should take us all the way to Phoenix Gate. Let's go.
wonder if Martha could spare us a few bushels. up smart, especially oh, for a bearer. Proper little prince you look. This armor looks fucking badass. Well, and a new sword? Wait, hold on a second. Invictus. One of this, one of a set of seven swords said to have been forged in the flames of Mount Tristanus. Invictus has been passed down through generations for use by the Archduke's family in his closest shield. Archduke Elwin presented Invictus to Rodney Bodar on the day he was promoted to Lord Commander of the Ducal Army. Metian Cross. Metia is sometimes called the Custrel, as legend has it that the brightest red star serves as the moon's attendant carrying her gear and equipping her armor in times of battle. This belt was par part of a set owned by the Archduke Elwin and kept in East Pool for when he had and his family would summer there. Uh, it is a long-standing Rosarian tradition for the Archduke to bestow a gift to scions of the Ducal line. Upon their coming of age, these bracers died in the red of the star Metia where what Elwin's father chose for him and formed part of a set of clothes kept in East Pool for when he and his family would suffer there. I fear that the old road to Phoenix Gate was lost to the blight many years ago. Have I care, not care. What the Both of you. Blight is. Maybe there will be more explanations later. Anything else for me? Oh, well, you won't say no. Come back soon, though. You? Those are Elwins. By the flames. You're his firstborn. Clive Rosfield. You're mistaken. Oh, you can't fool me, my lord. You're the very image of your father. And that would be true even if you weren't wearing his clothes. The self-same garments Hannah was keeping for you, if I'm not mistaken. She always swore that she would never part with them until the day Elwyn's sons returned. And now that day has come. <laughs> Why, you'll be able to take your bearers back as well. My bearers.
Forgive me, Master Mayor. I was a child when last I came to East Poland. I didn't recognize you. Oh, I'd be surprised if you recognized anything at all. Much has changed since Rosaria fell to the Empire. Not least for the bearers who once served her noble families. When the Iron Blood sacked Rosalith 13 years back, many who lost their masters fled here in search of sanctuary. And never returned. Aye. The plan was to send them home once we'd won back the capital. But then the Imperials arrived. Rosaria became a province of San Breck. The duchy was dissolved, and they no longer had any home to return to. Back in your father's day, any bearer who lost their master became a ward of the duchy. We'd hand them over to the sheriffs, and they'd be assigned a new position. But when we saw how the Empire treated their branded, we knew that wasn't an option. So they've been here ever since. And now you want to give them to me? They're yours by right. Lord Rosfield, bequeathed you by your late father. And they'd be better off serving you than hiding here. Indeed, many of them used to serve your house and still consider the Rosfields their masters. I'm no one's master. Not anymore. They wouldn't be safe with me. I understand. You'll forgive an old man his fanciful notions. Been daydreaming for too long. But still, I would ask a favor of you. A small mercy. If it is within my power. One of the bearers is an elderly fellow who still swears absolute loyalty to Archduke Elwyn. I don't ask that you take him into your service. Only that you meet with him. Let him see that Elwyn's son still lives, and that he's as fine a man as his father ever was. It would be my honor. Thank you, my lord. He sits by the well most days, watching the people go about their business. If you could show him your face, I would be most grateful. A man as my father. You're not so very different, you know. Especially dressed like that. Come on, let's go and meet that bearer. Where are you off to then? Or hasn't your master told you? Either way, I expect our humble village and your final destination. Not to say it didn't have its charms. He's not here. Well, I can't leave without meeting him. I've let the mayor down once already. It would be cruel to disappoint him again. All right, let's ask around. Someone must have seen him. Well, now, unfamiliar faces. What brings you to East Paul, travelers? We're looking for an elderly bearer. You wouldn't happen to have seen him, would you? Ah, you mean the old boy who always waits by the well? Yes, that's him. What, uh, what business do you have with him, if you don't mind me asking? You're not from the capital too, are you? We are, in a way. Well then, it's a pleasure to meet a fellow Rosalithian. I was born and raised down Market Street. I never would have left if Archduke Elwyn had survived the fire. It wasn't the same when the Duchess took over, though. All the beatings, the evictions, the levies going up and up and up, even as the blight took half the harvest. Oh, listen to me, telling you what you already know. I'm sorry. I'm afraid I can't help you with your bearer, either. Though I doubt you'll have gone far. He comes here every day, almost as if he's waiting for something. We'll keep asking around, then. Thank you. No. 
I feel good, boy. That's not where your chin is at. That's not how you give scritches. Good day, milady. What can I do for you? I'm looking for a bearer, an elderly fellow who used to serve the Rosfields. Have you seen him? Ah, that old loon. No, no sign of him today. Funny, he's usually down by the well at this hour, cooking up his fantasy feasts. I'm sorry? Oh, he worked in the kitchens at Rosalith Castle back in the day. Still thinks he's there now. <laughs> You'll often hear the poor fool chatting away to the Archduke. Living in a dream, he is. But better there than here, I suppose. Can't imagine the Viceregen stopping to trade tales with a bearer. Can you? No. Anyway, you'll be round here somewhere. Doubt he has the path to stray too far. Thank you. We'll keep looking. Hey, hold on a mo. Young Patrick, the chocobo keeper, might know where he is. He's taken the old bird under his wing, so to speak. He'll be in the stables. You should go and have a word with him. Patrick, the chocobo keeper. Thank you. We will. I'm sorry, Jill. Making you do all this in my stead. It can't be helped if we're to keep up the pretense. Come on, let's head for the stables. I wonder if I could have interacted with him sooner. Hmm, where the bloody hell's he got to? Excuse me, but is something the matter? It's this bearer I've been minding. I take my eyes off him for one minute and he disappears. He's not in his usual spot by the well, nor anywhere else in the village. You must be Patrick. I am, but... And this bearer you're looking for, he's an elderly man who used to work in the Rosalith Castle kitchens, yes? That's the fella. How do you know all this? I've never seen you in Eastpool before. But you seem to know the place better than I do myself. Myself. <laughs> ah, so that's how it is. Well then, if you're acting under orders of the mayor, you're on a bound to help me find him. <laughs> He's been losing what little sense he had left of late, saying the sheriffs are coming to collect him, and that he needs to go back to the castle. Uh-oh. I was supposed to watch over him, keep him out of trouble. But if he's walked out on us, there's not a lot I can do. Understood. You keep searching here, we'll look for him outside. Thank you. I'm in your debt. I hope he hasn't wandered into trouble. Let's just concentrate on finding him. Still no sign. Could he have strayed even further? Someone over there. It might be him. We should hurry. Oh, yeah, Company. We can't lead them to the old man. They need to die. Agreed. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
Are you all right, my friend? Come on. Let's go home. Your Grace! You came for me. I waited for you so long, but you finally came. I'm... not who you think. Clive. <sighs> yes. Pray forgive my long delay. It's nothing, Your Grace. I prayed to the Founder that you would come, and at long last, he answered. Will we be returning to the castle, then? There is still a place for me in the kitchens? No, my friend. We will not be returning to the castle, not yet. I'm on a very important expedition, one which may take some time. Could you... Wait for me in Eastpool. Until my journey is complete, I will come back for you then. I promise. Yeah, of course, Your Grace. For you, I would gladly wait until my dying day. Thank you, both of you. You've been most kind. The memory of serving the late Archduke was as one light in the darkness. And now that light burns a little more brightly. It's nothing but a fantasy, of course. But it's better than the truth of the matter. A damn sight better. The blight is on our doorstep. Our harvests are failing. The people are leaving in droves. If it weren't for Lady Hannah selling half our worldly goods to provide for the few of us who stayed behind, we would long since have starved. We want to keep the bearers safe here, we really do. But unless a miracle happens, we won't be able to spare a crust of bread to share between them soon enough. Is it really that bad? So bad, I even petitioned the Imperial Garrison to take them. But when they found out where they'd come from, they damn near spat in our faces. Ducal dogs, they called them. Enemies of the Empire. I know a man named Sid, who would gladly give a home to any bearer in need of one. Leave this with me. As soon as I return from Phoenix Gate, I'll speak with him. Thank you, my lord. Will you be passing through Eastpool on your way back? I should very much like to speak with you again, if you have the time, regarding the future of the village, and what might be done for Lady Hannah. After all, she's done for us. Yes, of course. I'll be back anon. Fare you well, my lord, my lady. I wish you a safe journey. Quest complete in the day.
The Deadlands are aptly named. I didn't realize they were this close. No wonder their crops are failing. The blight is leaching the ether from the soil. And when the last drop is drained, their fields will turn to this. No plants, no animals, no life. And no monsters. I suppose that's one small mercy. Fallen. Okay, Clive, I just said that. We won't be able to use any magic here. Another thing to worry about. As if the absence of ether didn't cause enough problems. Take away the lad's life force. And problems are all that's left. I can hardly imagine what this place used to look like before the Blight took it. I remember. It was beautiful. It's time to discover the truth. Yes, Jill. You got it, Jill. Phoenix Gate Ruins. It's almost as if time had stood still. I suppose no one had any cause to return here. No. It's just as I left it. anyone? Holy shit, dude. What is it, Torgo? Clive! That's him. 
He's the only one who can tell me what happened. I have to know. Why do I suddenly not start sprinting? Where is he? Nowhere to be seen. Damn it! He's like a bloody eel. What is this place, anyway? Some sort of shrine? Oh, sorry. You've never been here before. This is the Hall of the Gate. The Gate? It's a relic of the Fallen. Only the Phoenix's dominant can open it. Hence the castle's name. This was where Joshua was supposed to... Yes. Yes. He would have stepped through this door the next morning and listened to the words of our ancestors. Would you have gone with him? No. The Apollo Tree is holy ground. None but the Dominant may enter. I and the other shields would have stood guard here and prayed for my brother's safe return. Where the hell did he go? Perhaps he went inside. He couldn't have. He'd need the power of the Phoenix. Power of Ifrit work. Thank you, Joshua. Are you sure about this? Nevermore. Another gate, sisters. Let's see if this one opens. Call it a ruin. It's perfect. Like it was built yesterday. Have you ever seen anything like this? Yeah. <laughs> 
things still function? How can any of this? This must be what the fallen ruins were like before they fell.
Joshua have had to run this gauntlet too. No. At least not that I ever heard about. I imagine the Phoenix would receive a warmer welcome. Here we go again. Where will we end up this time? Surrounded by contraptions hell-bent on murdering us, I expect. Could the hooded man really have taken this path? We won't know until we've followed it all the way to the end. Come on, let's keep looking. Yeah! 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 
like this. Seems the feeling's mutual. done is it though what are these creatures and why do they keep attacking us they're probably asking themselves the same thing we're the ones trespassing here they're just protecting their home Jill, look. Whoa. 
Is that some kind of mural? It's worth a closer look, whatever it is. then. This place holds even more secrets than we thought. Here. 
Another fallen wonder. Ah, yes, it's a puzzle. How much of a puzzle you know? It's basically just tying it all in the universe. I'm assuming it will spawn the walkway in between here and that quote unquote near all. Something. Action. So, it isn't a dead end after all. Apparently not. She's like, why do you sound so happy? Look what's in it. What is it? How old oh. do you suppose this is? A thousand years? More? I don't know. I've never seen anything like it before. Who is that in the middle, do you think? Some sort of god. You're him. The second dominant of fire. Who are you?
Joshua chose me to be his shield. He gave me his blessing and asked me to keep him safe. I should have protected him that day. It was my duty. Joshua died. I killed him. And I blamed another for what I did. To spare myself the guilt. I feared the Bai. Accepting it, I would lose what little was left of me. So I ran. From everything. And now? Are you ready to accept the truth? I am. I know it won't be easy, but it's what I must do. So that Joshua's soul can finally rest in peace. It's rough, buddy. It's fucking rough.
It's all right. I'm done running from you. Together. That... It's time to find out who we are. Once and for all. What is that? shard
Clive. Are you all right? Jill. It's nothing. I'll be fine. No more chasing shadows. The hooded man isn't here. We should go. It'd be great if you could clue her in. So that's the mural that she was talking about, but I couldn't fucking see that. Clive, are you sure you're all right? Whatever it is, you can tell me. <laughs> I had a hard enough time telling myself. I awakened as a dominant of fire, right here in this castle, and I've been running from it ever since. That sounds like a skill issue. But now I know for certain who I really am. The second icon of fire, who killed my brother and burned this castle to the ground, was me, Ifrit. Oh, Clive. I took so many lives that night and destroyed so many more, including yours. And I must atone for the crimes I've committed, but not before I learn the whole truth. How can a second icon of fire even exist? And why was I chosen as its dominant? Who is the hooded man who brought us here? And what does he want? I need to know. And since I'm still breathing, I might as well make myself useful. We'll find your answers, together. I want to learn the truth, too. There'll be time enough for atonement when we're done. I was hoping you'd say that. I don't think I could do this without you. You never were one to hide from the truth, even when we were young. And you haven't changed a bit. You're wrong. I have changed. But I don't want to be that person anymore. The things she did were unforgivable. And yet, they're what brought us back together. Thank you, Jill. If he is here, then... The disturbance I felt at the care must have been... Confounded. The hour is later than I thought. said he said sit hate him I let 
Don't you run amok with the rest of your rats? And this is how you repay me? Well, find out where he is. I'll crush him, flay him, rip out his heart, him and all his filthy brood. You'll send every last one of them to Out. No. Yes, yes, my lord. <clears throat> Ifrit awoke and Clavis gained control of the icon Ifrit, allowing access to new iconic abilities such as Ignition, the fiery lunge that drives back enemies while dealing continuous damage as well as unlocking the limit break gauge. Slots for Ifrit's abilities are shared. Okay. Limit break gauge is located beneath Clive, Clive's HP bar. Clive releases Clive's inner beast and semi-prime into Ifrit by pressing L3 plus R3. When this gauge is full, the gauge fills in battle with both by taking damage as well as successfully performing offensive and defensive maneuvers. Semi-priming temporarily grants increased attack potency and speed, gradual HP regeneration, and guard breaking strikes. Damn. So, what next? We returned to Eastpool. I promised the mayor I'd talk to him again. About Lady Hannah, amongst other things. If she may be loath to leave, I can't help thinking she'd be safer with Sid, too. All right. We should arrange an introduction, then. What is it? What is I think good, I'll wager. Come on. Oh, fuck me. Does he pull up in flames? What happened? I see fire. Yeah! <laughs> 
thought you could escape us, did you, Brandit? <laughs> really? You were born a slave, and you'll die one! Kill all the Ducal Dogs! Ducal Dogs? They were innocent people! <laughs> who sheltered them. By Empress Annabella's command! Well, she can go fuck herself. My mother was at this. Why? Right.
Before this, I need to go blow my nose out and I'm going to use the restroom real quick. So I will be right back.
sorry, Lady Anna. Man, she didn't need to die. You deserved so much better. All of these people did. Better than my mother. Gav! Clive! Acting on the orders of the Duchess, eh? We knew East Pole was harboring bearers. Thought they were safe enough hidden up here, but someone must have let slip. If they'd have only come to us sooner, none of this would have had to happen. Fuck! My mother always did despise bearers. The way father embraced them, when the other nations spat on them as slaves. The way an accident of birth gave them a power that others lacked. But why kill everyone? They meant no harm. They just wanted to be free. This world judges that a crime punishable by death. Which is why we're going to change it. Gav. We want to help. Thought you'd got your own stuff to be getting on with. We do. But it can wait. Turns out it kind of lands up In that mission. case, we should head back and tell Sid you've had a change of heart. He was always on it yet to join us. All right. And we'd best be quick. Last I heard, he was planning another excursion. What about the villagers? Oi! Can I leave you's lot to take care of things here? Of course. We'll make sure they get a proper burial. Thank you. All of you. When you're ready, then. Now, rats, lead me to your nest. Lord Kuka has a message for your leader. If only he knew where to send it. <laughs> Sid Sola, then. We have a lot to discuss. I heard Otto barking at his lot earlier. Don't mind me. Just taking a quick... This place is getting more crowded by the day. I tell myself the bustle's a blessing. There'll be time enough for quiet contemplation when I'm dead. So, did you find the answers you were looking for? I still don't know what to make of this... gift, curse, or whatever it is I've been given. But there is one thing I can say for certain. I am a dominant, Ifrit, and there is nothing I can do to change that. It is a burden I must bear until my dying day. <laughs> Spoken true. Forgiveness and in turn salvation can only begin with acceptance. It's a path we all must walk, no matter how colorful our histories. Sid, you once told me that you wanted to build a place where people could die on their own terms. I did. 
I've been thinking about that. Why not a place where people can live on their own terms? For 13 years, killing was all I knew. So obsessed with death that I never stopped to consider the lives of those around me. Lives that I see now were scarcely worth living. Be they bearers or beggars, most but march blindly to their end, never realizing that they too deserve a choice. And I dare not turn a blind eye to their suffering any longer. So, atonement then, is it? That was the answer we found. The only one we need. I'll be expecting you both to pull your weight. And we will. <laughs> well then, with a sprinkle of fire and ice, this plan of mine might just work. <sighs> what trouble are you looking to get yourself into now? The best kind. We're going to sneak into the Imperial capital and pay a visit to Mother. Hmm. <clears throat> Sounds like a great plan. Most of our farmholds in the eastern provinces has succumbed to the blight. Without their yield, we will be hard pressed to fill the capital's granaries before winter. If there is a capital by then, the black creeps closer as we speak. And yet you do naught but fall and cluster. If it is fertile land the Empire requires, we need but look south. Uh, if you mean the crystalline Dominion's holdings, we are bound by mutual accord. Theirs is a neutral state whose borders we are sworn to respect. Gentlemen. Did we swear to see our people starve? Well, I really do think that... The gates of Oriflam buckle at the flood of those come seeking refuge from the blight. If there is not grain enough to feed those within our walls, how, pray tell, will we feed those without? But instead of setting your minds to riddles such as these, you lock horns with an enemy from across the sea, sending our soldiers to the slaughter in their thousands. The Empire bleeds, and you sit here prattling like crones in a tea house. And you fancy yourselves leaders of men. Sandbreck is naught without her citizens. We are but their servants. If their land is being wrested away, it is our duty to claim new lands for hmm. them. Your radiance! You can just rerun. You cannot mean a war of conquest. It's gonna smell bad if you don't. That is exactly what I mean. It is time we expanded yeah, our the dominion. This is the will of great Grieger. <laughs> there will be uproar. Then we must find a way to distract the citizenry. But how much will that cost? And what of our legion? Shall we raise the thirds? Well, someone will have to contend with the Delmex. I will not keep you. Time slot you all have much to do. All the other slots were booked. Hmm.
Where is my son? The Lord Prince is currently garrisoned at the Strait of Arthur. If it please you, I can send word requesting his immediate return to the Holy Capital. That won't be necessary. Tell him instead to see to his wounds. Bahamut's strength will be needed again soon. As you command. I must have misheard. You mean to tell me that the Mother Crystals are the reason the world is dying? Are you mad? I have been called that on occasion, but no, not today. We've all seen it firsthand. Empty wastes where once were green meadows. Land drained so dry of its ether, not even the rats remained. But where was it all going? I spent years searching for an answer, until I saw it standing right in front of me. There, in the self-same crystals, we look to for their so-called blessing. All right, listen. Take this crystal. How does it allow us to conjure magics? Answer, by drawing ambient ether from the air. And where do these crystals come from? That's easy. They're mine from the mother crystals. They're one and the same. Although, admittedly, this here fits more easily in the pocket. But the mother crystals are massive. Some as large as mountains. So you see the problem. Imagine just how much ether can be drawn by something that size. As to where it's all going, mind, well... I can't know everything, can I? We are taught that the Mother Crystals are divine. Their ether a gift from the heavens. For centuries, nations have fought and fallen for want of that gift. If what you say is true, how did no one else see it? Who says they didn't? Maybe the truth was inconvenient. Inconvenient to whom, exactly? Higher-ups? The gods themselves? <sighs> so now you want to do something about the crystals? And what? We're not helping bearers and dominance anymore. I didn't say that. I made a promise and I intend to keep it. But if we continue down this path, there's only one fate that awaits the realm. And we can't very well set our people free if they're all lying dead in a blighted ditch. Not if we want to create a place where they can live on their own terms anyway. Sort of defeats the purpose. So, if we have to bring the old world crashing down in order to build us a new one, what say you? Are you with me? I suppose it's about time I repaid your faith. <laughs> you could have just said I. But it's nice to have you aboard all the same. <laughs> for this. New items are available.
Don't mind me. Just taking a quick I heard Otto barking at his lot earlier. I see I'm busy here. Yeah? I'm saying for you, dear. No scratches, all right? No promises, all right? And? I wanted to send a message. You've lost a letter. Nothing too important, I hope. Not just a letter. I lost everything. There's a hole in my damn pack, and fool that I am, I didn't bloody notice. It can't be that bad, surely. How could it be any worse? I'm a courier. I carry things. If I can't do my job right, then what am I good for? Nothing, that's what. I buggered it right up. That means no herbs for the infirmary, and no fresh meat for our cooking pots. Worst of all, that letter I lost? It was for Sid. A letter he's been waiting on for days. Maybe if you retrace your steps. I'd scour storm from coast to coast if I could, but there are curse breakers in the field, counting on my arrival. No, I'll just have to own up to Otto and Sid. They're gonna skin me alive. Fine. Tell me where to look. Are you serious? Thank you. It sounds like the hideaway could use those supplies. So, where should I start? Gotan's bales, perhaps? I took a tumble in the bushes when I was passing through. There's a chance my pack might have caught on something. If you can find everything I dropped, you'll be doing us all a favor. And if you can find Sid's letter, you'll be saving my life. If it's there, I'll find it. <sighs> Wonderful. Now, I have to run if I'm to make my next delivery in time. I trust you can find your way to Gotan's bales. Oh, and hurry, will you? Sid doesn't like to be kept waiting. I'm sure he doesn't. The letter won't last very long out in the elements. I should make for Sambrek as soon as I can. What's this? He's never listening. Postmaster. Where are you, Randall? Is everything all right? Forgive me, young man. I was in a world of my own. I'm worried about my friend, you see. He left some time ago and hasn't returned. You know what it's like out there for a bearer on his own. Why leave the safety of the hideaway? For coin. Sad though it is, our need outweighs the risk. The hideaway can't survive on goodwill alone. And though Karen does what she can, her coffers aren't bottomless. Wait, you were a soldier, were you not? In the Imperial Army? I was. Then, might I ask a favor of you? I'm too old to be traipsing hither and yon. Will you go and find him for me? Do what I can. I'll do what I can. Oh, thank you. What can you tell me about your friend? His name is Randall, and I suspect you'll find him in Lost Wing. He's been working for Quinton, the tavern keeper. He'll know something, I'm sure. I'll speak to him. Safe travels, my friend. And thank you again.
Courier said his pack might have split while he was passing through the bales. I better keep my eyes open. Good. Looks like I'm in the right area. More of the lost supplies. He could have fit much more in his pack. Still no sign of Sid's letter, though. I've come this far. Might as well ask around. A little overdressed to be picking grapes, aren't you? Are you here for Master Quentin? I'm looking for a letter someone dropped nearby. And I suppose you've seen it. Can't say I have, sorry. Well, if you do... Wait... I did pass a dog with something in its mouth a little while back. Could have been a piece of paper. No idea if it was your letter, but you never know. Which way did it go? Towards Lost Wing. Seemed well looked after to me. Dare say someone there's been feeding it. To the village then. Thank you. Don't mention it. You know, mal in the village entry is no small task. It's looking to be a fire. I wasn't trading you for it. Back, are you? Did Master Quint him summon you? The shad's all salted and smoked. Seems we have our culprit. Sorry, boy. Someone's waiting for this. And he's waited long enough already. Hopefully this will keep our career out of trouble. A whole day on the line and there's still... But what will we do for supper? But how did the grocer know his daughter had been stealing her? Went in. Ah, if it isn't Sid's young protege. To what do I owe the pleasure? I'm looking for a bearer called Randall. I hear he's been coming to you for work. He was expected back at the hideaway some time ago. A friend of his asked me to check on him. Randall, you say? The porter? Yes, yes, I know him. And I can't say I'm surprised if he has been delayed. I gave him enough to do. Though, thinking about it, he should probably have been back by now. I'll go and look for him. Where was he headed? He was to meet an associate of mine to the south of here, on Lorbert's Pass. I do hope nothing's happened to him. Be sure to let me know, Clive. Can I have another cup, Teddy? There'll be none left for me. <laughs> Sun's setting fast. Yeah, 
right. The hanged man. Thank the gods. You're one of us. We were attacked. Beastmen on the road. Randall knew he didn't play the hero, but... <coughs> Reckless sod insisted on drawing them off. Where did this happen? Further down the road. In the clearing. Please. You have to see that he's safe. I'll do what I can. You go back to Lost Wing and tell Quentin what happened. Slay the beast, man. Goblins. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> That's enough! I'm finished! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Randall. Looks like I was too late. He doesn't deserve to rot by the right side. I'll speak to Quentin.
did the gross. Ah, there you are. My it's man like told me what happened. Now. And? I can't help but notice you're alone. Damn it. I feared as much. He's not far from the South Gate. I trust you'll do right by him. Of course. I'll send someone right away. I knew he was brave. No, I didn't know he was reckless. Poor fool. Had you known him long? A while. I liked the fact that he didn't shy away from dangerous work. And he liked what I paid. Because it helped keep the hideaway afloat. I'll tell Sid what happened here. I expect he'll be none too pleased to learn of Randall's fate. And I suppose you're none too happy either. For your trouble. I should just own up to... There you are. I just got back to the hideaway and thankfully Otto hasn't seen me yet. I, I don't suppose you, um... Found the things you dropped. I did. I was so sure they'd be gone. And the letter? Only a little worse for wear. skulking about in the shadows for me then <laughs> and all thanks to you losing those supplies was one thing but if Sid had found out about that letter is it about curse breaker business <sighs> if only it's from his daughter she's off studying in Canver and her letters are all that keeps Sid sane while she's away he never mentioned a daughter well he's a busy man and thanks to you, he won't be wasting his time smiting careless couriers with leaven bolts. So I'd say you did us both a service. Here, for your troubles. If there's anything you're wanting from Sid, today's the day. He'll be sweet as honey once he gets his hands on this. Available to read out too. 